everyone, thank you for joining our Analyst Viewpoint series of videos. My name's Andy White, I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Numara Software. We're a leading provider of IT operations management software for medium to large enterprises, serving over 55,000 customer sites worldwide, who in turn are managing over 20 million IT assets. Joining me today is David Johnson, Senior Analyst for Desktop and Mobile Infrastructure and Operations at Forrester Research. And in this series, we'll be discussing six topics relating to IT operations management. These topics are going to cover the issues facing organizations both commercially and technically in virtualization, service management, cloud computing, asset and lifecycle management, the exploding world of mobile device management and the wider consumerization of IT. And we'll be concluding with a security and vulnerability video. David, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Andy. It's a pleasure. In this section of Analyst Viewpoint series, I'd like to discuss the dramatic adoption we're seeing in cloud-based services for business and for consumers. A recent Forrester report showed that they're forecasting a spend of nearly $150 billion in public cloud uh, technologies, but also a very significant growth in private cloud technologies. Is this a reaction to the economic climate or is there a fundamental shift in end user requirements? I think uh, it's a fundamental shift in what's available to people and, and the freedom that they have to make those choices. Um, and also, you know, new offerings available to enterprises now that weren't available a few years ago are opening up new doors. Um, but it takes a couple of different directions, and, and I'll elaborate a little bit. Um, there's a personal cloud idea, things like, you know, Dropbox and Evernote and other things that I can use as an individual to improve my productivity and get things between devices. Um, but there's also the significant trend toward moving enterprise applications um, to SaaS-based solutions. Um, it happens with corporate email, um, but it's also happening with things, things like the the corporate service desk, um, where it makes a lot of sense to do that rather than doing it in-house. Um, so that's, yeah. Are there, are there particular market segments that are well suited to cloud-based uh, business services? I think that will evolve over time. Obviously, the more that a company has invested um, in the automation and everything else around an on-premise solution, uh, the more difficult it's going to be uh, for them to make that transition. But we've seen large organizations do it, so it's not impossible. Um, but it seems like organizations that have less to change, uh, that it's less impactful are the ones that are, that are most likely to do that. Often that's smaller organizations. What's driving this change? Is it, is it to remove some of the overhead, the burden of managing the technology? I think that's part of it. Um, certainly, you know, the removal of cost overhead is one big driver and it's an easy one to see. Um, I think the other side of it though, which is potentially even more powerful, um, is that software as a service and cloud-based services can deliver more value uh, in many ways. And for the same reason that I don't make my own television shows in my living room, right? I, I, uh, you know, I, I get them from a provider, right. um, you know, a cable company and, and the networks uh, because they have economies of scale. Same thing with, with software as a service and, and cloud providers. They'll have the ability to be able to provide uh, scale, rapid release cycles, and uh, an overall better quality of service than can typically be achieved in-house. So um, is there a particular type of organization that's a good candidate for cloud? I mean, is it, is it the large organization or the distributed organization? Who, who's a good candidate for cloud IT service management? Um, that's the interesting thing about it. Um, I, I don't think that, it, uh, that it's limited to small or large or distributed or non-distributed. Um, certainly a cloud-based service, just by fundamental nature of the technology, um, particularly if it can be delivered on a global basis, um, uh, is going to work well uh, you know, for a global organization where you have a lot of distributed people. Mm -hmm. and network links and VPNs and everything else tend to get in the way right. of the effectiveness of, of in-house applications. So you know, cloud-based applications open that up more. For example, I mean, why, why would I want to put the sales data you know, in a Salesforce automation system you know, behind a firewall that's difficult to get to from my people in the field who actually right. need it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So a cloud-based service can work really well for that. Same thing with remote service technicians right. and you know, suppliers and so on. That works great with a service desk that's in the cloud. So is this a new phenomenon or is something that has been around for a long time? Um, I think the label cloud uh, is sort of new, but it's, it, it denotes a shift in thinking um, you know, be, before, beyond what's gone before. 
Um, you know, certainly for many years, we've seen companies try and take traditional in-house applications with a Win32 client, put them out in somebody else's data center, and say, oh, it's the cloud. Right. Well, it's really not. It doesn't work that way. The cloud has taught us, and, and certainly cloud-based applications like Salesforce and others have taught us that, um, you know, the use cases and the usability and those kinds of things and the interface that you have to present um, need to be different. And uh, the way people interact with those applications is different than they would be. So not just yeah. moving it into a cloud exactly. and yeah. has to be designed for cloud. It's not just a location issue. Um, what are the perceived barriers from the customer's perspective for cloud? Is that is that security or what, what are the challenges that they're facing in the decision making process? Probably the biggest right. is simple inertia. Right. Yeah. You know, you've got, unless there's some reason to change, the status quo tends to prevail. Uh, cost um, can be the driver, but, um, you know, when you've got a lot of investment around processes already, sometimes it's very difficult to move those things out. And that's why, when, you know, when I mentioned earlier, you know, one or two things, taking those and moving them out is kind of the way to do it because it gets around that organizational change issue. Companies perceive this as an organizational change. It, you know, it, it faces potentially barriers to change. And, uh, and so that's the, the biggest thing, it's just organizational inertia. Right. Yeah. And security as well, perception yeah. of security. And, and what about sort of um, scalability and performance? Definitely cloud scale um, is, is become a term uh, that, uh, you know, in and of itself, it defines massive scale in many cases. And so, you know, the scalability and performance of software as a service providers uh, is, is potentially greater uh, than, than can be achieved in-house. Um, certainly their level of automation, you know, their level of quality of infrastructure and things like that can be greater than you may, you know, offer for just one application in-house. So there's opportunities for better scale. And do you see, um IT service management and the wider IT operations management expanding into cloud management. As you mentioned earlier, you know, Dropbox and Evernote and maybe AWS servers that are spun up quite easily. That's clearly got to be a bit of a challenge for the IT management team. It is. <laughs> it is, and frankly, they're uh, they're not able uh, to, to provide a level of security around these services. Now, you know, for software as a service applications, I think what companies are really looking for um, is a level of guarantee, a level of assurance that this cloud service meets a standard, right? One that they need to be held to by their shareholders, by their by the law and their organization. They need to be able to certify or demonstrate to auditors that the services that they use meet these standards. They're also looking for a level of indemnity, uh, making sure that if this cloud-based service gets them in trouble with an outage or you know a, a breach of uh, of security, that there's some level of recourse available, you know, to help them recover. Um, and that's uh, that's another part of it. So we've mentioned service desk. What, what's the logical next step for cloud-based IT management? Is, is, there a, is there a next chapter that we can expect to see? Yes. Um, we're already seeing this begin in some ways, where starting with small things like patching, uh, in right, the case of client management, 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 patch management, or um, incident management, for example, you know those things beginning to move to the cloud one thing at a time. And that makes the transition easy. It's not a wholesale thing where everything just has to go, it's all or nothing. It means I can begin to, with relatively little risk, put things there right. over time, and pretty soon I've made the complete transition. Uh, I think that's what we'll see. It's not going to be a wholesale shift in most cases. It's going to be, you know, one category of service or, you know, one category of application that, uh, that goes. So a degree of convergence happening in the cloud. Absolutely. Well, Dave Johnson from Forrester, thank you very much for joining us today. As we mentioned, we have six videos in this series in the analyst viewpoint. You can visit numarasoftware.com to research any further information on IT operations management. I'm Andy White for Numara Software.